We are recording. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. We are talking all about feeling good. I'm calling this 50 Shades of Feeling Good because there's a lot of different dimensions to feeling good. And I wanted to clarify a lot of mm, misunderstanding around what feeling good is and what it means and, and how that can really manifest in your day-to-day -day experience. Because feeling good, when people think of prioritizing feeling good, typically people immediately go to this overindulgent, um, lazy, just sloth-like approach and overconsumption. That's usually what people think as soon as feeling good comes to mind. This could not be further from the truth. It just couldn't. And how you want to think about feeling good. First of all, let me speak to that, that idea of feeling good just being this sloth-like, um, lazy, over-consuming. Okay, that, that sloth archetype, if you will, is not going to feel good for very many people. It's like that is something where if you are, if you're burnt out, if you're overworking and you're stressed to high hell, there can be a homeostatic response that comes on the heels of that experience. Because if you've been working, 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 it's like a slingshot. And then all of a sudden to overcompensate for the burnout, there's that deep, deep, deep rest that is necessary. However, you're not going to be able to stay there forever unless you're in perpetual burnout. That's the only way that it, uh, that it can actually feel like it's balancing, if that makes sense. So for example, if I were to just do nothing and sit on the couch watching TV every day, I would not feel good. If you eat fast food every day, you're not going to feel good. And so it's interesting how people have conflated feeling good with all of these activities that we often put in the bad category. When they're done in excess, then all of a sudden it's something that can become a problem. All of these things are, are oversimplifications of a much more complex system that's going on. Okay, so when we're thinking about feeling good, this is always going to be a relative experience. So if you have abundant energy throughout the day and there's many things that you want and you have many projects that you're interested in pursuing and there's all sorts of different things that you're really jazzed about and then all of a sudden you suppress that you sit on the couch that right this is the classic thing that people talk about you're actually going against what is going to feel good. When you get a ping internally about like, ooh, I, I have this vision for my life and there's this thing that I want to do. And then instead of, I don't know, even something like making a list. I was doing this with myself the other night. I really want to clean up how I'm doing my mornings. And one of the things that I realized about myself is typically in the evenings, like after five o'clock, my enthusiasm for things really dies down. And so if I'm not capitalizing on the early part of the day, I know that I do not like doing things late at night, even though I like staying up late. But there's all of these other things that I'm really excited about creating and doing and moving toward and stuff that I want to do early in my day. Like I want to start going to the beach early in the day. There's a lot of stuff that, that I'm interested in moving towards. And so the other night I, I ended up writing a list of what, how do I, I really want to structure my day? What is my goal day or what is my dream day looking like just the act of imagining it and taking a moment to list it out that was satisfying 
that made me feel good because I have, I have an idea for how I want it to look. And then I put it out on paper. And now I'm starting to think in terms of, okay, well, what's the first step that I want to take? I think the first step that I want to take is changing the time that I'm going to bed and the time that I'm waking up. That feels really attainable for me right now. All of that is movement in a really satisfying direction that does feel good. Just those simple things of putting things into place. That's so satisfying. I'm really exciting. I'm really excited for all of the things that are going to unfold as a result of me taking these micro steps, because that's really how everything happens or how it, how it unfolds. So let's, let's back up for a moment. When I say 50 shades of feeling good, the, the thought that came to mind earlier or a good example of this is actually human design. So one thing, if you're interested in human design charts, one of the things that you'll notice is each type has a signature feeling. So for reflectors, it's surprise. For manifesting generators and generators, it's satisfaction. For projectors, it's success. And then for um, manifestors, it's peace. Okay, now those are all ways to feel good, right? Success feels good. Uh, satisfaction feels good. Peacefulness feels good. Surprise feels good. And there's so many different other ways that we can feel that do feel good. Feeling good has infinite depth and the expression of feeling good has infinite possibilities. There's not one way of feeling good. And so don't get into, don't fall into the trap of thinking that feeling good means overcompensation in the rest department. That does make sense if for a limited experience, for like a, a narrow window where that actually does apply and that does balance the scales. And that is how you come back into balance. And that is how you recover. That is possible. But for many people, that is not what's going to feel the best on a day-to-day -day basis. So really this comes down to what applies, what does feeling good look like in your life? There's so many different ways that it can, that it can come up. I had another example that I wanted to give. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a big one that comes up. Okay. So you have people who are really into like discipline, like I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to get up at 5.00 AM. I'm going to hustle. I'm going to do this, that, and the other thing. And then on the other side of things, you have this hyper feminine, I'm going to lay around and I'm going to smell the roses and I'm just like going to be in my bliss and I'm going to la 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 la, something way more uh, fairy-like, if you will. Both of those experiences can feel good. And so the interesting thing is that most of the time when people think about feeling good, they usually go to hyper-feminine expressions of feeling good. And that's not, that is not true. When, when some dude is talking about like hustle and grind and get up early in the morning and get after it, is that not satisfying? Not, it's not gonna be universally satisfying, but for many people that is going to feel good. And that is the right expression, that is the right direction for them to move. So both are correct, it's just a different flavor. When you think about feeling good in terms of flavors and what relatively makes sense, a whole new world starts to open up. And so one of the things that I can't stand, like it is such a pet peeve of mine, is when the hustle bros start to talk about things in the context of, Oh, oh, you're, you're comfortable on the couch. Like that's, that's usually the dig, the job that they make. Like, oh, you're, because you're focused on feeling good. That's, that's wrong. The, again, that is not accurate. That's not an accurate statement. When someone is struggling 
to move in the direction of something better, it's oftentimes a momentum issue. It's an overwhelmment issue. Sometimes people do, would, they, they know in their heart of hearts that it would feel better to do something else, but I don't know where to begin. Or I've been numbing for so long, I don't know how to shake out of that experience. And so then it looks like what a lot of the time people are assuming is, you know, that sloth archetype that we talked about in the beginning. And so for whatever reason, when people think about feeling good, that's the first thing that comes to mind. But when, when someone who is in the, the hyper-masculine, like I'm going to hustle and grind that mode, what they're failing to understand is that that is satisfying and that is them feeling good. Just because it has a different outfit on does not, d- d- does not mean anything. It's still at its roots, it's still the same thing. And so anytime someone says, oh, you shouldn't prioritize pleasure, you shouldn't prioritize feeling good, it's like, you're doing the same thing, dumbass. When you're getting up at the crack of dawn and you're getting after it and grinding, that is your version of feeling good. Pursuing things feel, feels good, leaning back and receiving things feel good, being pampered feels good, taking action feels good, having a full spa day where you're just in receiving mode, that feels good, doing a hardcore workout feels good. All of these things are versions of feeling good. It's just when we start to get into the overcompensation zone or we start to bleed into extremes, that's when it becomes more of a problem because then the body falls out of balance and it starts to retaliate. Okay. Or if the, like if the momentum is something that you're just having a hard time truly identifying what it is that you need, that's when people start to run into issues. Because anything in the extreme is going to eventually have a shadow expression, right? It's, it's the difference between intentionally enjoying a show that you love and getting cozy on the couch and being permaglued to the couch and being immobilized, right? Those are the, one is intentionality and one is extreme levels of momentum. So the point in all of this is that if you can start to look at feeling good is the answer, not from a purely hedonistic standpoint, even though that is wildly fun in many ways. That's not the only dimension of it. That is one expression of it. So when when people are thinking about to-do list items, tasks, working out, chores, whatever, you want to think a little bit broader. You want to think not about cleaning the kitchen, but the satisfaction that comes from experiencing a clean kitchen. Or you don't want to think about how sore you're going to be if you're working out. You want to think about how accomplished and how much better you feel having completed the workout. Or like when I when I start um, the process of really changing my sleep cycle, it's like, will it suck in the beginning? Yes, but the satisfaction of having all of those hours given back to me in the morning when I know that there's a limit to the amount of time that I actually want to be working on stuff during the day. And so instead I get to capitalize on this time when I'm most alert and I have the most energy because I do, I like setting myself up early in the day and then I like working right after. And so I want, I want more time. I want to move the window in which I'm experiencing those things so that I have more daytime to myself before I, before I don't want to do anything. Right. So when I'm looking at the full picture, it's like all of these other things are going to feel satisfying. Don't go, don't go too narrow when it comes to, um, 
feeling good because the other element that you want to keep in mind or the other factor that you want to take into consideration with all of this is your personal momentum that you've been experiencing up to this point. Okay, so that that would be if you know that you've been doing this day after day, or you know that things have been this way for a long time, and you know that you have a tendency to uh, participate in this activity or this pattern, and you know that it's been longstanding, and you know all of these things, then you just have to be conscientious of that. And then you have to make decisions that are going to Yes, feel good. Yes, feel satisfying, but not be so far out of bounds to the point where you experience so much resistance that you're not going to move in that direction. And I think this is this is the part that people really struggle with in in finding the balance between what is actually me feeling good, staying in alignment and moving on things, moving in the direction towards uh, things that I want to experience or I want to achieve or whatever. And so you want to you want to get into this mindset of feeling good is more big picture than you may have been realizing. It's not about instant gratification or just continuing the momentum that has always been there. It's about the whole the whole picture. When you look back on this day, what do you want to have said you did? What do you want to have done? When you're looking at the to-do list, what what would you like to see off the to-do list? You know, and those are the types of reframes that you can use in order to see what, what is going to be the most satisfying for me. What is going to contribute to me feeling good? And so I, I talk about emotional relativity a lot a lot, a lot, because it's a huge factor. It's something that we all have to feel into. Like boredom, boredom feels way better than depression. So boredom isn't bad because it's relatively better than a lot of other things. But then interest and inspiration and excitement feels a lot better than boredom as well. So you just you just have to identify what is it that you need that relatively makes sense and then how can you start acting in ways that are congruent with the big vision right congruent or not not even the big vision it can be something smaller but it's it's you want to zoom out just a bit when we're thinking about feeling good because continuing the same patterns, like if I don't change the time that I'm waking up, I am, it, it is like, I've said this before about the clopin analogy. I'll say it again here because it's relevant to this conversation. You are the closing manager and your future self is the opening manager. So the version of you tomorrow, next week, a year from now, that's the opening manager. And the opening manager is having to deal with what you're doing right now. Okay, so all the decisions that you make are going to, you're, you're setting up the close and the opening manager is going to directly experience it. So when you start thinking in those terms, your perception of feeling good starts to change. What would feel good now you're taking into consideration, okay, me in this moment and opening manager, future self, the version of me that is going to experience what I have done now what I'm doing today, the changes that I'm making, the action that I'm taking, the things that I'm knocking off my to-do list, right? All of that stuff. And so you don't want to completely screw over the opening manager every day because that's what ends up not feeling good. And that's what leads to feeling overwhelmed. And so if you can just start to think more multidimensionally about pleasure and about feeling good, and about what makes sense relatively to you in the moment, things are going to get much better. 
in my opinion. What else do I want to say about this? Oh, yes. Okay. So the other thing, because one of the things that I've been doing um, right now, you know, big kid school starts pretty soon. Uh, on June 1st, we're starting. So that's when we go into the first week of material. But I've been, you know, putting different categories that I want us to do over the course of three months. And so I've, I've been trying to figure out like where where things should go and what's a good mix of indoor outdoor and what's a good mix of like, okay, this week is going to be simple. And then this week is going to be a bit more technical. And I'm trying to make it like a good flow for everyone. And there's one week in particular where I'm like, this week is actually really counterintuitive because it's not these like pleasure-based hedonistic activities. However, the satisfaction level is something that's really high. And so I'm just noticing like, oh, it's, it's interesting because the feeling of fulfillment and the feeling of pleasure is not something that only comes from like eat at your favorite restaurant and watch your favorite movie and go to your favorite park. Like that's, that's a limited scope of what actually feels good and what constitutes a really fulfilling life. And so even if on the surface you think it's not it's not the most feel good activity, when you zoom out, you'll start to see but the experience of all of these other things are going to result in me feeling good. In the same way in the beginning, building momentum around working out can be kind of difficult for people really just getting after it and sticking with it and being consistent that can be um challenging just to like start like just to push the first domino can feel really difficult but when you zoom out and you're starting to look at okay what what would ultimately in the long run or even like a week from now what would feel the best and what would feel the most satisfying it really starts to clear things up and it gets a lot easier and it changes the lens that you're actually working with. So anyway, that is what I have for you today. As always, you know the drill, Big Kid School in the description box, in the show notes, in my link in my bio, all of that good stuff. We start really soon, but I hope this clarified some things around feeling good for you. And I will talk to you all next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.